Well, let's talk about Alex Jones. One week after Elon Musk told advertisers to go F yourself, uh, they then tried to blackmail him, censor him, censor voices on his platform. That's what they've been doing all along, basically trying to tell him who you can have on your platform, who you can't have on your platform, and he told them to go F themselves. Musk then uh, reinstated Alex Jones to the platform, and legacy media went absolutely apeshit. That's right. That's legacy media. That's legacy media mom right there. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, the, the, the response was amazing. Even on X, the platform that's, you know, supposed to be free speech, pro, you know, no censorship. David Levitt wrote, writes this on, uh, on X. How many innocent people will be murdered because Elon Musk allowed Alex Jones back in Twitter? And I think he's, he's, he's serious about that. Like, that he, he says, you know, uh, uh, racists, misogynists are going to go and attack people now. Because Alex Jones is back on Twitter? What? What world are people living in, by the way? Um, I mean, you should see what happens when McDonald's brings back the McRib and then pulls it away really quick. Yeah. People have died over that. It's people... Like the same thing. You get... People go ballistic. It's like that, you know, liberal lady freaking He's out like about it. like the McRib. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the, but I don't know if you guys saw the mainstream media response to this was crazy. The, the newspapers today, the Washington Post, Elon Musk restores account of conspiracy theorist Alex Jones on X. By the way, the Washington Post it was pushing the Russia uh, collusion hoax. So who's the conspiracy theorist? The Washington Post? The Washington Post went all in on Russiagate. They're the ones that were pushing, pushing a hoax, pushing a conspiracy theory. But they're the Washington Post, so they can pretend to be high and mighty, right? Okay. So then here's the Huffington Post. Elon Musk hosts unhinged panel with Alex Jones after reinstating his ex account. Okay, uh, it was an unhinged panel. I, I listened to the whole thing. Nothing about it was unhinged except the door or the zipper on Vivek Ramaswamy's pants because he because <laughs> he went to pee and forgot that his microphone was on. He was a part of the panel as well. And, and you know, everyone heard it. That's about the only unhinged thing. Unhinged it was actually a fairly interesting. I mean, it was a really interesting discussion about censorship, about free speech, about speech you don't like. But unhinged? Like, what part was unhinged? I, just, I love this. Salon. Here's another one. Elon Musk flips the switch on Alex Jones' X account after doing one of his weird polls. Okay. It wasn't his poll. It was somebody else did the poll. And it was after his interview with Tucker Carlson. Someone else did a poll and said, should Elon bring back, uh, you know, Alex Jones' account? And, uh... So he didn't run the poll. Here's Rolling Stone. Elon Musk marks race to the bottom with Alex Jones, Ramaswamy, Andrew Tate on a live Twitter chat. So I listened to the whole thing. I don't know. Did you guys listen to it? I thought there were a lot of interesting yeah. moments. What stood out to you? I mean, what was one of the big I, takeaways? I really liked the, the, you know, a lot of the stuff that Andrew Tate and Alex Jones were telling Elon and about how, you know... It, like the one thing that I don't agree with is that Alex had to get voted back in in the first place. I don't think he ever should have been banned in a perfect world because I'm a free speech purist, right? But right. I think that conversation probably opened Elon's mind a little bit to all the people that are still banned that shouldn't be. Because like one thing Andrew Tate brought up that I thought was really good is like, if you make a mistake or you say something wrong, you shouldn't be canceled from the conversation for the rest of your life. Now, there are some people definitely that should be canceled from the conversation for the rest of their lives based on the the you know extremity of what they've done. But I don't think something you've said uh, should fall into that. Right. Um, incitement to violence. And I thought Elon's response on all mm -hmm. of this was, you know, well, if someone in the future says something that's inflammatory or that upsets somebody... What will you do to them? Will you ban their account? How will you handle that? And he said, no, we're going to err on the side of the law. If the person, we're going to follow the law. If the person has broken the law, that's when we would take action. If the person has violated the law, incited violence, caused physical harm to somebody somehow through the platform, they would, you know, that's when we would take action. But we're going to always come down on the side of the law in this. And I feel and, that's the way it has to be. That, that's the yeah. only way you're going to actually be able to do this the right way. 
and then you deal with it as it comes. Then you have community notes working against people. And, and the thing is like, if people have a problem with the things they're saying, they don't wanna see it, you can always block them. That feature has been there since old Twitter. So if you don't like it, you can block them. If you wanna create your own echo, cha echo chamber, you can, but these companies should not be creating the echo chamber, which has been what we've, it's what we currently have on YouTube. It's what we have on Facebook. It's what we have on all these other platforms as they create the echo chamber and we're allowed to exist in it as long as we don't echo the things that they don't want. Al Gore this weekend, I don't know if you heard him, he was at, you know, went off about social media mm -hmm. and how it's, it's, uh, it's destroying people's brains and we need to control it. And his argument was that if it's not mainstream, then we can't trust it. So if it's not CNN, if it's not the Washington Post, if it's not the New York Times, if it's alternative media, then we, sh we can't trust it. And it's, we, and it and it's actually falls under the label of misinformation. That's how Al Gore sees it. So alternative media outside of the mainstream is misinformation. Uh, you know, I thought one of the other interesting aspects of this is the advertising piece and all of these advertisers that have been you know, sort of uh, strong armed to be pushed away. And we already had uh, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is filing a lawsuit um, against Media Matters for fraud. And now you have th just a few minutes ago, you have the Missouri Attorney General also filing a lawsuit um, and this is Attorney General Andrew Bailey. We have reason to believe that Media Matters used fraud to solicit donations from Missourians in order to bully advertisers into pulling out of X, which was formerly Twitter, the last platform dedicated to free speech in America. We have launched an investigation. So now that's two different attorneys general that are launching investigations against Media Matters for bullying advertisers for leaving the platform. Uh, so maybe we're turning a corner now, you know, perhaps maybe we're starting to to see some light here and turning a corner. Um, well, I have, I mean, if, if you just watch certain narratives that you follow, like, like Israel or whatever, it is on that platform a lot harder for them to spread the propaganda that was so easy for them when old Twitter was around because they could squash anything that went against any propaganda that they put out, like the Hunter Biden laptop story, for instance. Right. They're not able to do that now. There, there are so many things that, that you can uh, see there that contradict the propaganda now. And I think that is ultimately they are going to lose control of propaganda if this platform is allowed to stay in the the way it's going well you gave me a perfect segue because there was a moment last night in this twitter space now to just be clear how this was it was like a two hour long twitter space where they welcomed alex jones back and he was on there and there was a bunch of people on there um you had uh mike flynn popped up there andrew tate uh there was a bunch of people that popped in there and uh, vivek ramaswamy etc and then it was interesting because uh alex and then elon elon jumps in and they Alex sort of starts interviewing Elon and they have this sort of back and forth. And he admits Alex Jones basically says that he believes that he's going to be targeted, that, you know, he's going to be that Alex Jones, uh, Alex Jones said that he believes Elon Musk has a target on his back and they're coming for him. Um, that he's going to be through violence. In fact, he said, watch out for like radioactive isotopes in your food. And he even said something that I found fascinating. I didn't know this. Alex Jones said that, he has it on good authority that early in the Trump administration, they thought that someone was messing with President Trump's food in order to poison him. And I thought that was a holy smokes. OK. And that President Trump himself was actively worried about it. Now, whether or not it was happening, we don't know. But according to this, that he was he was actively concerned about it and would sort of watch his food being prepared after that as a result of that. But he was Maybe warning that's why Elon you Musk. Eat McDonald's and stuff like fast been, food. He's like, I, if I just go fast food, uh, I don't have to worry. Right, I'll just go through. Well, that was, you that know? was the rumor I had heard. I mean, mm -hmm. it was obviously like unsubstantiated, but I like like years and years ago, heard that the reason he eats he only eats cheeseburgers like McDonald's cheeseburgers is because of that very reason that he was paranoid about being poisoned. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, yeah, and maybe even extended into the White House. I'm not exactly sure about that, but uh, he was specific about Elon Musk, like with a target on his back. That they're, you know, again, as the only free speech platform, and he's exposing these people. Now, you, you, you can agree with things Elon says. You disagree with him. I don't agree with everything he says, but it's a platform. I don't care what, you know, he's the guy that's like behind it. I don't really care. I'm, I'm caring what's the conversation is on this platform right now. And 
I think you're right. You're seeing things you wouldn't otherwise get to see. But I, I thought it was interesting. He thinks he has a target on his back. Andrew Tate also said the same thing. He thinks Elon Musk is there's going to be very dangerous times ahead for him and that he's going to be uh, basically uh, use, using the law uh, to go after him, that they're going to they're going to basically use the law over and over and over again to to come after him. And it just will just wear you down, wear you down just after lawsuit, after lawsuit, after lawsuit. And uh, in the same way that they've come after him. So and well, said, and I guess the one the one fortunate thing about that is he happens to be one of the richest men in the world, if not the I, I'm not sure at this point. So he actually has the money to fight it, whereas like some of these other platforms, they have to cave because they don't have that kind of money and time to fight this. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, but so Jones says, look, if they go, if they gun down Elon Musk, that only makes him bigger. And I'm quoting him now. They don't want to, they don't want to turn us into martyrs. They either poison you or they come, they come to you in a murder suicide. He told Elon this, they'll kill your wife or they'll kill you. It's a deep state tactic. So they don't want to martyr you, but they'll just do something as simple as like a poison or murder suicide. I mean, he told him this It's crazy. Um, and they all went on record last night saying, I'm not a person to ever, you know, commit suicide. That's not who I am. That's not something I'd ever do. And they all said that. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, Jones also said that, um, yeah, that there are, he, he said that they are, they, are, um, they are hatching assassination plots to take out President Trump. Now, he confirmed last night, Alex Jones confirmed something that I've said on this show for months I've said on this show for months, they will not let Trump become president. I just don't see how they will. I don't see how the deep state allows Trump to become president. And Jones said it well, last night. He said they're actively hatching plots to take out the former president and Elon Musk, just like they did with John F. Kennedy. Well, and I agree. And the thing is, I, I'm hoping that that opens more people's eyes, even on, on both sides how corrupt our electorate is because like that it's going to take something like that. Like if, if he's polling and, and everything in the top and everything, and, and you see no, nothing come out of this, this uh, lawsuit or whatever. And then all of a sudden he still can't like, I, I'm just really hopeful that that opens people's eyes to what's really going on here and, and then be like, okay, I guess there is something wrong. We need to fix it. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying, you know, Alex Jones is any kind of hero or anything like that. I'm, I'm simply having a conversation about this event last night and him being brought back to this platform and what this means more broadly for, for free speech. Um, the very first question that Elon asked him, Elon asked Alex Jones last night was about Sandy Hook. And he said, quote, obviously it would be heartless and cruel to deny a school shooting. And then Alex Jones went into his long, like, explanation about it. And tried to uh, try to explain how what that he was echoing the sentiments of someone else, you know, someone else's thoughts on it, and that he never promoted that idea and all of that. Um, but uh, there's, you know, it's very difficult to go back and try to find video of him actually promoting it. But uh, you know, any, anyway, don't want to get off on that piece. But that was the very first thing that he asked him about. Then Jack Prasovic asked Elon what he would do if the FBI came to his house or came to Elon's house and asked him to censor things on the platform. And here's what Elon had to say about that. Listen, sees though the FBI, the DHS, et cetera, if they reach out to X, I believe they called it defensive briefings in 2020 regarding which eventually culminated in the censorship of Hunter Biden. If they started reaching out again, would that be something that you or the team and, and no, I can understand if you don't want to answer now, but you would consider making public. We will be as transparent as is po as possible with uh, with that, you know, the, yeah. And, and frankly, if, if if I if I think a, a government agency is breaking the law in their demands on the platform, I would I would be prepared to go to prison personally if if I think they are they are the ones uh, breaking the law. Hmm. Jones also said. Um... Or Musk said that he was not afraid to die after reinstating Alex Jones. That if if he has, he said if if they have the deep state has plans to assassinate me, then um, I I I'm not afraid to die. He said a lot of people are afraid to die. I am not. He said. So crazy, 
But yeah, I thought the interesting, there was a couple of interesting takeaways. I think the the idea that they're trying to target Musk, that Andrew Tate said that they're going to use lawfare instead of warfare, lawfare to use the legal system to try to come after Musk, slow him down methodically, ripping him apart piece by piece legally um, and, uh, and all of that. Well, and I think if they're successful with Trump, we're going to see a lot more of that because if they're like, oh, we can do this, then they're going to start doing it to more people. Yeah. I mean, I'll say it here again. I, I, what do you guys think? What do you think, dude? I mean, what do you think, Philip? I think that I don't think there's any way that the deep state allows Trump to become president. I just cannot see it. Oh, no. I No. I mean, we, uh, those are two. The RNC and DNC are private parties. The RNC does not support Trump at this point. Right. So he's not going to get the nomination. No, I, 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 I don't Nikki see. Haley. I honestly do not see how he could get the nomination with that party at this point. No, Nikki Haley will get the nomination probably. She's yeah. getting she's getting all the if, money, if stood, the deep state money. Yeah. If he stood any chance at all, he would have to go independent of some, uh, somehow and, and still be able to be on the ballot. There's going to be so much fight to keep him off the ballots in so many states like they're already doing it. They're already fighting to keep him off the ballot. So I don't see how he could do it at this point. Yeah, I think they're. Yeah, I don't see how it's going to happen. You, you, you notice all the news articles about Nikki Haley. That's all coming out of the deep state. It's all coming out of the military oh, industrial complex. The neocons and the military industrial complex loves her because she's all in on war. She's carrying the water for them right now. She's, uh, she's, she's calling for censorship. She's calling for registration, bioregistration. Uh, she wants, uh, you know, she wants, uh, she wants all of that. So she's like, she's like a neocons wet dream right now. And so that's why you're seeing all these articles popping up Oh, Nikki Haley's looking more favorable in the polls. She's, she, you know, she's beating Biden, and you know, so you're going to see a lot more well, Nikki that's Haley why, stuff. And that's exactly why they're going to attack Vivek so so hard because he is pulling her into the light, and they're yeah. trying to keep her in the shadows. And the more he pulls her into the light, the more pissed off they're going to be, and the more we're going to see against him. Yep, neocon Nikki Haley. We'll see, and they'll take him out. So again, I, as I mentioned off the top of the show, some a guy was arrested today. For trying to assassinate Vivek Ramaswamy. They took him under they took him in custody this afternoon. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.